Hey guys, my name is Sharpie, and today I've got some All The Mod 7 to the sky tips and tricks for you. I have 13 things I wish I knew when I started All The Mod 7 to the sky. Now I'm pretty proud of this list I put together. I would be surprised if anyone out there knows all these tips. If you do, leave it in the comments, and if you have any more of your own, leave them down there in the comments for other people as well. So I've been playing All The Mod 7 to the sky a hell of a lot on the channel. You can check it out if you like, but when I first started, I didn't know all of these things and it would have been so, so helpful. Coming up first, we've got a quest that you can accept. It is the very first quest in the Getting Started tab. My playthrough, I missed it completely and I did not even click it and I didn't get the lava, I didn't get the ice, I didn't get the seeds, the cactus or the sugar cane until like my third play session. You can get all these items pretty easily and quickly. So if you just want to skip a little, like a, an hour or two of grinding, you can just click and accept the rewards and to get a little bit of a head start. I don't think it matters too much, especially if you put in practice some of the tips I'm gonna share with you here. In the end, it is up to you whether you wanna grab the lava and make an easy cobblestone generator and get yourself started that way. Number two, if you do accept the lava bucket, all you need to get a cobblestone generator block, three iron for a water bucket. You can put a lava bucket, water bucket, piece of glass and six logs and then you have an auto little cobble generator. It's not in any of the quests, so it's not super obvious if you don't know about it already. This is a very useful block later on, and the earlier you get it, the better. But if you don't grab the lava bucket and you are grinding, right-clicking grass blocks to get stone pebbles, basalt pebbles, diorite, andesite, all these junk pebbles, clogging up your inventory, and all you really want is stone to make cobblestone. I came up with a little uh, trick. All you need to do is fill up your inventory with stone pebbles and leave one slot in your hotbar open. Equip that empty slot and just hold right click on the grass. What this will do is it'll add stones into your inventory to the other stacks of stone pebbles that are already there. And whenever you pick up one of the trash <laughs> pebbles that you don't want, it'll automatically throw it and destroy it. This method does take a while, but you know, what I did when I first started, I put something heavy on my right mouse button and then I just left the room for a bit, came back, had tons of stacks of pebbles, and then I got lots of cobble, pretty easy. Okay, number four, the building wand. If you don't know about the building wand in this skyblock pack, and probably a lot of skyblock packs, it is pretty damn useful. If you already know, you know. But the building wand can basically quickly and easily just build rows and columns of what you've already built. It just takes what it needs out of your inventory if you've got it. This is very useful for putting all your cobble down quickly, crushing it with your hammer, grabbing the gravel, putting all the gravel down quickly, crushing that with your hammer, turns it into sand, putting it down with the wand, crushing it, turning it into dust for whatever you need. Number five, speaking of gravel, there is a recipe in this mod pack. Three gravel will give you one piece of flint. Now this will be useful when you are upgrading your string meshes for your sieves to flint. Instead of wasting a lot of gravel, um, sieving the gravel, there's a lower chance of getting flint out of it. Also, if you want to take it one step further, you can create a cutting board and a shovel. Put your gravel on the cutting board, use the shovel, you'll get your gravel back every time, so you never lose a gravel block, but you also have a chance of getting a flint back as well. If you really want to hold on to those resources, you can do it that way, but that is the absolute best way to turn your gravel into flint. Okay, number six, I learned this a little bit too late, to be honest but your sieves can be placed in a five by five grid. That means you can be sieving 25 blocks at a time and this is a huge time saver. All you need to do is set up the meshes, set up the sieves, but you have to right click on the middle sieve for all of them to work and you're off to the races. Number seven, after you've been sieving for a while, you're gonna have a lot of ore pieces, like iron ore pieces, you got your gold ore pieces, stuff like that, a lot of stuff. It's clogging up your inventory, but you can quickly turn it into ore just by hovering over it in your inventory and pressing the K key by default. Obviously you can change the key to anything you want later. I've kept it as K. It's a very nice addition to have considering the extra steps you have to go through to get metals in this mod pack. Once you've got your raw ores, you'll want to make an ore hammer so you can crush your ore into dust. One raw ore will be crushed into two pieces of dust, effectively doubling your or output. This is very, very useful early on for iron because you kind of want a lot of iron in the early game as much as you can. You want to maximize that. The cheapest ore hammer you can make would probably be copper. You can also make an iron ore hammer. And yeah, this is a, a, a must do pretty much. To, this will save you a lot of time. 
possibly hours. Another one I wish I knew a lot earlier was that if you sieve your dirt blocks, you have a small chance, but a chance nonetheless to get grass seeds. That way, if you're building another platform and you want grass to grow there, you don't have to have a long trail of dirt connecting the grass and eventually it'll grow. You don't need to do that. You can just pop the grass seeds down onto a block of dirt and then you'll have a grass block over there on your new little patch. But yeah, a simple one. It's kind of rare to get. I believe it's a 5% chance when you sift the dirt, but you need to sift the dirt to get other things that you need as well, like the mycelium spores. But if getting dirt is a problem, this next tip might help. Number 10, the Philosopher's Stone. Now this is a pretty easy to craft item and it, it turns blocks into completely different blocks. You don't need fuel for it, it just works. I don't know every use for it, but I do know that you can turn a cobblestone block into a grass block with a click of a button. And that just makes things so, so easy. In fact, now that I think of it, it makes my last tip obsolete because if you get this one, you can turn cobble into grass. So if you've got the resources, I believe it takes gold, gunpowder, and blaze powder. So if you've got that, you wouldn't even need the grass seeds from the last tip. But yeah, it's very powerful. You can also turn your cobblestone into stone to make it look nicer so you don't have to worry about building ugly cobblestone platforms. You can turn it into stone later, which is a lot nicer on the eyes. But yeah, the Philosopher's Stone is a very cool item and I'm sure there's a ton of uses I don't even know about yet. Maybe we can find out together. Number 11, two blocks of sand crafted together makes one snad block. You wanna use snad instead of sand to grow your cactus and your sugar cane because it is unbelievably fast. You can literally just place the cactus or the sugar cane down. By the time you're done breaking the block, it'll, it would have grown to a, at the height of two and you'll be collecting two. So it's kind of crazy. It's kind of, it just feels like cheating really. You can obviously set up automation with, uh, with hoppers that could catch it and using half slabs to auto harvest when it's ready. I thought that was a very cool tip. Next up, number 12. This one kind of goes against Skyblock, I feel a little bit. As soon as you get your first diamond, you can rush the Twilight Forest and then you have a ton of early game resources at your fingertips. You've got food sources, you've got, you've got tons of dirt, you can go mining, you can play normal Minecraft, but in the Twilight Dimension. I haven't been to the Twilight Dimension yet. Doesn't seem completely like fair, you know, sky blocky. Like it, it just, it just seems weird. At least in the nether, there's no, there's no terrain. There's only structures. So it's like something, something's up over there. It's still got the spirit of Skyblock in the nether, but I feel like you lose a bit of that if you go to the Twilight Forest, but you can find tons of ores. You can get limitless dirt and all you need is flowers, two by two water source and a diamond and then you're off. Okay, number 13, the last tip. This was very cool. This is the way I got my netherite armor. It is the Igneous Extruder. This machine makes uh, a bunch of different stone type blocks, but I used it to make netherrack. To craft it, you're gonna need invar, which is two iron dust and one nickel, and that'll make one invar dust, and you can smelt that into an ingot. You also need constantin, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, which requires one copper and one nickel dust. Craft it together, and then you smelt the constantin dust to get your ingot. That's how you get those. Once you've got your igneous extruder, you can place it down. You need a lava block next to it on one side. You need a witch water next to it on the other side, which you get by placing a water barrel on top of a mycelium block, which is what you need the mycelium spores for from earlier. And you need a redstone block underneath as well. And this machine just cranks out netherrack like there's no tomorrow. If you set up a pipe into a chest, you'll fill that chest in no time. You can send that netherrack into a hammer that'll crush it. Send it into a flux sieve. You'll have netherite scrap in no time. Those were the 13 things I wish I knew when I started all the mods seven to the sky. Did you guys know all of them? Did you guys know most of them? Let me know. Uh, was, it, was it helpful? Did you learn anything new? I'd love to know. Do you have anything to add? I'd love to also learn a bit more for my playthrough, which by the way, you can check out on the channel. I wanna say thank you to you guys because we just recently hit 1000 subscribers and it means a lot. I'm gonna be live streaming soon here on the account. We're gonna be playing all the mods seven to the sky. That'll be fun. But if you did enjoy, please subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you next time.